Hey, what's good, Gears friends? Old ass Ninja Tips here. Got some more cool tips to share with you with this improved version of the game that continues to work wonders for me with whatever update the Coalition drops when dealing with pretty much every scenario the franchise can offer. And I'd really like to start at choosing to go supporter mode on one's squad mates uh, and engaging one's battles with a support weapon first by default, then choosing to go Nasher once the distance is right. Since players don't really start matches at close quarters, where Nashering is the most effective at anyway. And everyone goes straight for power weapon pickups when matches commence to get first dibs on the key map positioning or cross support leverage. If one isn't playing musical chairs around the map with every piece of cover around them, not being a wild bounce away from them, then that's a dead red or blue guy. I've always mentioned that softening one's target increases their chances for, uh, of winning with an Asher battle by decreasing the amount of pellets that one has to land on one's enemy. Which right now I haven't been able to figure out how much of the Lancer's magazine must be consumed, if all shots land of course, to be able to equate that damage dealt to a specific number of Nasher pellets, especially due to this new tuning they gave us to try out. They buffed the Lancer with the new update, supposedly, but it was more focused on increasing the wideness of shot spread as long as one uses full auto, but who does that anyway, right? No supporter mode on the 2v2 game mode, but what you can do is break their support by playing the Pac-Man guy around the map, forcing these ghosts to get into a single file line. It's like in Pac-Man, everyone's moving at the same velocity by default and objects only impede. Gave that random dude a tip that to win Nasher Battles, he's got to ensure landing one hard aim shot and hitting a blind one for the combo order doesn't matter because it's about ensuring the pellet hit counters, not having them countered in the shortest time span possible. As I was saying earlier, with the new tuning on the Lancer that dropped a couple days ago, it shouldn't feel like a huge blow to burst users and should still feel like, it's almost has, like it almost has the same potential, but I think with less ammo. Now why do I say this? Well, the initial burst of any weapon with large capacity magazines such as the Lancer, Talon, Enforcer, and Retro does maximum damage. Then the recoil and lesser damage output kicks in thereafter, so long as one's holding steadfastly on the Fire Trigger. Now, it's a good thing that they haven't nerfed the Retro, Enforcer, and Talon, right? Regardless, all it takes is one well-aimed burst, even from point-blank distance, as you've seen a few moments ago to counter an Astro Shot, whose round has not been activated through the active reloading technique. I've been following the supporter primary playstyle since Gears 4 with the Enforcer, and it's still working. Always taking into consideration how vulnerable I look because of my potential lack of escape routes, meaning there are no cover items near me, and my opponent doesn't really think I'll reaction Brody run in a 45 degree angle to reach that corner of cover not go for the typical telegraphed angle wall bounce. Angled meaning it has some sort of degree to it. I'll go more over wall bouncing on the next chatter style tip video since I want this video to focus on advancing as a supporter and not being afraid to be caught vulnerable around corners and pillars where the blind spots hide the enemy. I always have my backup escape route chosen first and thought of before my attack plan goes into full effect. And I use my vulnerability as a strength and not weakness because we're all baiting, we're all bluffing, yearing, and fishing for those mistakes. And the only way we can do that is by being unpredictable. The enemy looks at our momentum and figures out our next presumable location knowing the game's max given velocity, the velocity for character movement. Now we have those dodge shot side bounces, 90 to 360 degree turns, we got wall bounces, cubic cover items, and pillars to help block incoming fire. We got roadie runs to help one create that unpredictable behavior. And Call of Duty doesn't have any of that. So good luck in that linear game if you play it. Momentum is still a big thing in Gears. Devs talked about it a couple of days ago too, with relevance to Nash or Gibbing. Opponents that close in for the Gib distance can set themselves up for failure as their death sphere comes in closer to ours and risk their lives just the same. In the end, when two active natural shots pop off at the same time and both make a hit on each other accurately, it's about the two characters' positioning or last known input during that shot animation. This is why my inputs are always making my characters to either move to the eastern, southern, and western cardinal directions if I am facing my enemy. Always in a direction away from my enemy at the precise moment I am firing the Nashra at most likely with the combination of a single deep press or hold my roadie run button for a wall bounce or side ro roadie run parry dodge. Just like when they go for the up aim and back aim maneuver, momentum is being delivered and developers confirmed it with a new tuning upgrade released that. Again, the game is going to calculate one's momentum towards their opponent, aka the roadie run head down forward rush as a higher chance of getting gibbed, especially automatic if one's 
opponent is moving away from that linear style momentum. This is where my recommended 5 o'clock step came about, using one's opponent's momentum to one's advantage, kind of like jujitsu and where the 7 o'clock dodge maneuver also applies when talking about the flip side of a cover item. Shooting from the left side without a back A or up A to not dock death spheres. Concept is still the same, one should not approach a corner of a cover item directly, otherwise a slap shot or overhead aimed in shot is inevitable, placing one at a disadvantage from the get-go. Strategies on national tactics on another video for sure, plenty to talk about like I said when it comes to dealing with all the possible battle schemes. Let's all go do some supporting now, and I'll see you in the next one.